Me, proudly being a goth, a misfit, and a weirdo, was more than happy to sit down and watch Wednesday on Netflix. Unlike other misfits who were shunned, ashamed of their gifts and their differences, Wednesday was proud, strutting about like a peacock, using her friends, families, and even her foes to do her bidding. I don't miss her. Friends are a liability and can be exploited. That makes some weaknesses. We've seen the cautionary tale in movies like Carrie, where darkness and isolation completely destroy an individual, or an entire school for that matter. However, Wednesday stands tall. Even with a five foot one petite frame, she is willing to challenge and fight and glare down anyone who stands in her way. Unlike Carrie, she is obsessed with mastering her dark gift, summoning her ancestor Goody for help, and stopping at nothing to save the students of Nevermore. Now, we can all learn a few lessons from Wednesday, and I don't mean iconic dance moves or snarky one-liner comments. I'm sure it won't be too challenging to play a uplifting Fleetwood Mac melody. As long as you promise to hang me as a witch afterwards. We can all learn how to stand in our truth and gain the courage to be our authentic selves. We will talk about this and more in this video, so please stay tuned. Let's go. Uh, uh, if you identify as being human, then you understand that it is in your nature to be afraid of rejection or worse, being ostracized. The most primal part of your brain understands that you have a very little chance of surviving without the herd. As a result of this, you will do anything to belong. You will people please. You will deny your own abilities and gifts. You will lose yourself entirely in a relationship or even in a religious organization. Let's be real here. Most of us are programmed to conform and anyone who deviates from the status quo is going to be shunned, labeled as an outcast or classified as just weird. Many of us need guidance and structure and as a society, there must be guidelines and rules that we all must adhere to for the greater good and of course for public safety. However, what happens when we get so caught up in following the rules, traditions, and protocols that we truly forget who we are? And so it begins. You lose a great deal of yourself and maybe your freedom when you start to feel obligated to other people. It all starts with you feeling pressure to attend your sister's birthday party or going to church on Sundays, even though you're not really feeling it. You're expected to behave in a certain way or say certain things to console, assuage, or influence the people around you. Then it gets worse. You start having responsibilities. You have to work at a job that you hate. You have to tolerate people you secretly loathe, compete in tournaments for silly trophies and recognition. Soon, the real you fizzles away, and the only thing that is left is a mold that is made out of all of society's conditionings. It takes 40 plus years to break away, lose everything in a midlife crisis to finally decide that you really don't give other people think about you. While Wednesday, just a young girl, decided that she didn't care about others and what they thought about her just seconds after she was born. On the surface, you may think that Wednesday pushes people away because she is deeply afraid of rejection. However, Wednesday Every day says all about it back. Me. This one just comes with a cake and a bad song. Maybe that's the best thing about being goth, a misfit, and a weirdo. You don't have to conform. In fact, Wednesday is totally free to be herself. She doesn't have the fear of judgment or rejection or isolation because she doesn't need anyone's approval. She doesn't need anyone to validate her. She isn't like Enid, who gets hot and bothered by her mother's snide and snarky comments about why she hasn't wolfed out yet. Or Bianca, the beautiful siren who needs to be adored by everyone at the school. Wednesday, wiser than her years, understands that relationships come with strings attached. Whenever you get involved with someone, you realize that you have to give up some aspects of yourself. That's the compromise that we make when we decide to be in a relationship.
But sadly, there are far too many cautionary tales of misfits, weirdos, and goths losing virtually everything when they decide to open up their heart to someone else. We see this in Tim Burton's other films, such as Edward Scissorhands, where Edward's love for a young girl causes him to go from hero to town villain. Let's not forget about poor Carrie. The one day that she tries to be normal is the day that she gets publicly humiliated. Let's face it, things don't always go well for the misfit, weirdo, or goth. Again, as a society, we are programmed to reject weirdness, not just because it doesn't fit into our status quo, but because it's a threat to our very existence. If weirdos took over the world, then chaos might ensue, throwing the hierarchical structure so off balance that it destroys the institutions that we have come to love and loathe. Yet, things are slowly changing. They are changing in such a way where being a conformist is not going to guarantee you any real success. We live in an age where YouTubers make more money than doctors and people are quitting their teaching jobs to make a fortune on OnlyFans. We live in an age where our creativity and our uniqueness will set us apart. And it doesn't turn us into misfits, but icons. In truth, very little people can create. Less than 10% of the population, in fact. Creators have no choice. They have to be true to their authentic voice. Not doing so violates the very essence of who and what they are. And because many misfits, goths, and weirdos have the courage to be who they are, they are a magnet to people who seek the same freedom that they possess. This is why weirdos are able to make millions of dollars writing books, designing electric cars, or directing movies and TV series. And they create art that inspires us and shapes our childhood. With goths and misfits and weirdos, all the fakeness is stripped away. What's left? Just us being our authentic selves and not apologizing for it. After all, being ourselves is the hardest thing that we have to do. And it takes the most amount of courage to do so.